All right. <laughs> no way. I am Dylan Sprouse. I am a renowned video game addict and comic book fanatic. Today I have been challenged to imagine my superhero alter ego. Hi, I'm 10 Hundred. I'm an artist from Southwest Michigan. And my job today is to make a piece of art based off of Dylan Sprouse's superhero alter ego. This one should be interesting. <laughs> well, let's kick it off with some superpower basics. What are my superpowers now in real life? I suppose that when I am dedicated to something, it's 150%. I also uh, have very large, weird, and wide feet so I can swim really well. Foot fetishists love me. When I was younger, I played this game called Hulk Ultimate Destruction, and I was crazy about the gamma jump. And ever since then, I actually think jumping really hard through the sky is actually cooler than flying. Don't ask me why. So I would say that my character definitely has to be able to jump really high and really far, long distances. I'm not talking just like, you know, oh, he's like, oh, wow, he jumped eight feet in the air. No, I'm talking like this man soars over buildings with his thigh strength. The other thing is I like, uh, I always like playing druids. So I definitely need him to be able to communicate with animals or, you know, summon a giant battle bear or something like that. It doesn't have to necessarily be a bear. It just has to be an awesome animal. It could be a giant squirrel. I don't care. I acquired my superpower when I was stranded in the woods, I came across a uh, magical cricket. It told me that it is something like my spirit animal or a spirit guide and that I had to consume it. And so I did in a state of delirium. And not only was I full to burst, even though it was just a cricket, but I had acquired the power of a cricket's legs and the ability to communicate with other animals and insects. Of course. My partner in crime is my girlfriend, Barbara. She's the only person on earth that I actually want to do everything with. You know that feeling? Where you like have someone in your life and you're like, there's no situation that she wouldn't make better if it was if she was there with me. Alter Ego's partner in crime? Giant animal of some sort. Like a fierce, giant tiger. Like a hippopotamus are too scary. Even like a giant fox. That's cool. Let's do that. Okay, my personal build, I'm average height. I'm definitely uh, more built upper, but I'm still pretty lithe. I'm not like a beefcake. In terms of my superhero alter ego, I feel like Bruce Lee fit. Like not big. I mean, this man survived on a uh, diet in the woods, so. Uh, but he's very nimble, kind of Spider-Man-esque, right? But also just a lot of back hair just for no reason. He just cuts his nails into points. The more that I describe him, the more that I feel like he's kind of cat-like. Uh, I would describe my hair currently as voluminous, full-bodied. It usually doesn't smell great. And likewise, the superhero hair, uh, just long, looks like a horse's mane. It's got some braids in some part. Uh, it probably has like a raven that lives inside it and really hairy feet, like a hobbit. My eye color, this feels a little bit like a, uh, like I'm on a dating site. <laughs> my eye color is, uh, they're green. And then my superhero alter ego definitely has some sort of animal eye. Yeah, I feel like eyes like an owl, but they're bright orange. That's tight. My real life kryptonite is uh, spontaneous beatboxing. I don't mean to be a Scrooge, but when someone just all of a sudden beatboxes, I'm like, oh, please stop. And my superhero's kryptonite would definitely be either too hot or too cold weather. Because even though he communicates with animals, he's not furry. And he definitely doesn't wear the skins or hides of of the animals that he communicates with. How would I describe my past? So, uh, my past, it was both a very interesting um, past that had a lot of hardship to a degree, uh, but also a lot of uh, luck and blessed interactions and fortuitous things. 
that happened and I wouldn't trade it for anything. And for my uh, alter ego, he was actually a, uh, a, of course, a super rich billionaire. I'm rich. Who got framed by his, uh, I don't know, like scary uncle or something who wanted to take control of the empire as he was first in line, let's say that. And he was set up on a puddle jumper plane on one of his charity trips to the Amazon that was uh, forced into crashing. And that is where he found that cricket as he was trying to survive. Um, and so part of his goal is to uh, unite all the animals to help him take back over his empire, of course. Uh, my happy place is sitting right in front of my computer and I recharge my batteries by playing video games. My superhero alter ego's happy place would definitely be like a bubbling hot spring that only he knows about, right? Like in the, in the forest, like he goes through a grove and there's just like moonlit mushrooms and shit and he just sits in this happy place inside of his like bubbling hot spring. My style and dress is um, kind of Cali boy skate rat a little bit. Tuck in my tees, cuff the pant leg, and uh, I like boots. My superhero's dress code is a lot of loincloths. Hell yeah. But obviously, no, no animal material. Unless it was donated to him by an animal. I mean, he's not like stark naked. He's definitely got a suit on, you know camouflage or he has a suit that automatically blends into the color palette of the environment he's in. Uh, me personally, I generally always wear my uh, Mjolnir. I wear uh, a ring, just a ring of a wolf. Um, and then my character's accessories, he had to have something that he took from his uncle, a hollow locket. Right, like this is dystopian future, right? It's a hollow locket of his family. And probably also he's got like a, he's got a vial of like very rare seeds. He can plant those seeds and they can magically become a shelter for him. He always carries around a huge sharpened tusk, right? That was given to him. And it's tempered and it's harder than any steel. And then he also has a pouch on his waistband that contains a food that he makes himself, uh, but that is also edible for all animals that he interacts with as a bonding ritual. Oh God, man, I mean, defining trademark feature. That's a hard question to ask a twin. You know, I got some tattoos, but in terms of battle scars, got a scar on my knee once from falling skateboarding when I was young, broke my wrist. There's a scar on my wrist from that. But you know what I would like? Maybe this is for my alter ego. One of these. You know, the scar over the eye. The cool pirate eye thing. One day after this interview, if you see me and I have a scar over that eye, know that it was not accidental. Somehow that just happened. I do have a catchphrase. Someone told me this the other day. I said, um, oh, I always say in truth. I catch myself saying it too often. People are like, in truth? <laughs> my character alter egos catchphrase he definitely comes in like a bird if he's pouncing in from atop somebody he'll go Ca -ca! like he'll do like the bird calls thing and he'll descend my signature move is the shotgun for sure you know the funny thing is is that i started it ironically at first i was like ah oh, 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 and now i use it every day and my superhero alter ego's signature move uh would definitely be <laughs> <laughs> People are like, stop that, it's cringy. And he's like, no. <laughs>I am done with this crazy project. I threw some varnish on the piece, bubble wrapped it, packed it up, and sent it off to Dylan. Oh, so exciting. All right. So this is me as my superhero alter ego. Pretty excited to see the outcome. <laughs> no way. I love it. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize it was gonna be this well done. Bravo, I'm putting this above our bed. Thank you guys for watching this. You can check out Beyond Kuiper on Audible and you can also check out Sun Eater as well through the Heavy Metal Store. Um, and I love you.